And thinking about, you know, ways to modulate anti-tumor immunity, um, a very interesting and promising uh, strategy that is underway um, is investigating T-cell engagers, targeting DLL3. DLL3 is expressed in small cell lung cancer, as well as an extra pulmonary small cell lung cancer in greater than 85% of the cases. And we now have several T-cell engagers that are in development in different phases of development, including terlatin. Terlatimab. Terlatimab is a half-life extended by specific T-cell engager that is now in phase two and phase three. Um, we also have HPN328, which is a tri-specific T-cell activating construct. And then lastly, BI764532, which is a bispecific monoclonal antibody in phase one and two. So I'll start by highlighting the um, experience with terlatimab in small cell lung cancer. We saw that in the phase one experience, um, in the Delphi 300 study that was promising anti-tumor activity in a heavily pretreated population with a response rate of 23% and a median duration of response of 13 months and a median overall survival of 13.2 months. The safety profile uh, was mainly due to um, cytokine release syndrome, which was primarily grade one and two in nature and reversible. And the treatment discontinuation rates were low because of treatment related adverse events. And we've also now seen the phase two open label study called the Delphi 301 study. And the results here demonstrate, again, activity of terlatimab in patients um, previously treated with extensive stage small cell lung cancer. In the phase two experience, the objective response rate is 40% at the dose of terlatimab 10 milligrams. And we're seeing this uh, result translate into promising progression-free survival, as well as overall survival with the median overall survival at the 10 milligram cohort of 14.3 months. We're now seeing terlatimab move to earlier phases of development, including combination of terlatimab terlatimab with anti-PD-1 um, in small cell lung cancer plus chemotherapy in the front line. And we're also looking at it in second line as well as in the maintenance setting. HPN328 was the other agent to highlight. This is an agent that is also being um, investigated and now in earlier phase setting in phase one and two not only in the phase one and the dose exploration, but also in phase two in combination with atezolizumab. And so far this agent is um, uh, appearing to be well tolerated. Again, as expect expected, the main side effect grade one and two CRS and promising efficacy in patients previously treated. And the third agent is BI764532 that's being investigated in small cell lung cancer, but also interestingly in neuroendocrine tumors. In the study that has been presented so far, in uh, the inclusion of patients, there were 53% of patients with small cell lung cancer, 38% with extrapulmonary neuroendocrine carcinomas, and 8% in patients with large cell neuroendocrine tumors. And we're seeing, again, similar activity, similar side effects of CRS. Um, and these agents are also moving forward in other stages of development, including combinations with immunotherapy, not only in the front line, but also versus topotecan.